What is going on guys? Why is it here? Coming to you with the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Uh, this was our Friday potluck spin and we matched up against the fine people over at Grand Witch Auto GWA. Uh, these guys are awesome. Part of the uh, part of the FPC um, and you know just this great group of stand-up individuals over there. So uh, it was a fight to the finish. <laughs> if we're going to check this out. 85-83, so 2.0 did squeak out a win here. Uh, a seriously nice performance, though, so, by GWA overall. They got, a, I think, the only 11 versus 11 triple of the war. Uh, ended up struggling on a couple of the 10s. And really, it was um, sort of a similar situation we've been in. So let's check this out. There's one, two, three... Four or five bullies they had to squeak in there. And when that happens, it just kind of doesn't set your tens up well. And if your tens aren't completely amazing out the gate and to have a little bit of struggles, then it makes it really hard for them because they have way less attacks to use. And it's that domino effect, and it kind of hurts you in the end. And that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, 2.0 uh, did a really good job. Didn't have any 11 uh, versus 11 triples, as I said, but cleared the board all the way down otherwise. So fantastic jobs. Uh, by all <laughs> just a beautiful war uh, a nines and tens uh, really our tens stole the show I think we had five ten versus ten triples here that I'm gonna get to show you um, however our nines did a really good job as well so I'm gonna this is gonna be a fairly extended recap uh, recap sorry I got a lot of replays to show you we're gonna start off here at number 29 DH <clears throat> going against this uh, very interesting base kind of a theme of the nines as I try and do generally is I like to show bases from other clans that are really, um, really trying to keep up and, and start to experiment with newer meta sort of base designs. And I like to do that because I find a lot of the times, um, a lot of the bases leave themselves open and prone to very old school attacks because of that effect. Uh, because of that fact, you sort of lose sight of sort of some of the fundamentals and leave yourself open like things like very exposed air defense this is a this is sort of an interesting one but again no no buildings to funnel or anything on the outside so he can just drop a nice group of units handful of valks and a king they're gonna suck right into this base and start getting value there's a few um high hit point buildings in there so it takes his valks a minute but at the same token just you're you're in the base far too quickly uh with seeing the hogs there jumping in from the outside they're just instantly inside the base on top of this stuff helping uh helping out the kill squad gets a rage down starts busting these valks with the wall they're gonna go into the core continue their way and stand there under a heel and do perfectly fine it even gets the rage there so the valks get a big chunk of that wall Get let right into the base. He's even got a miners coming in that he joined with those hogs, and they're just wrecking this base. And it, there's so much of the trash is on the outside now that he's kind of busted into the the meat and potatoes of this base. It's done for. It doesn't stand a chance. Not a lot of spaces for traps. Really, there's only a couple cannons, a Tesla, and an archer tower to worry about. Once this goes down, it's got to take this trash out. <clears throat> miners do pitter out because they uh, they keep going through the base while. Well, uh, Everything goes down to finish off the trash, but there's a few more buildings to go, and that's a tree in the bag for DH. Nice job, man. Boom. Right, it's 27. Mick Grady, I literally was on DC with this guy like five minutes ago, not even. And we were talking about this attack, and he kind of broke it down for me. See, so uh, you look at his troop comp. He's got miners in the CC. He brings this one Valkyrie. And it's got very specific purpose, which is what I love. I know whenever I had to question Grady about this one Valkyrie, because I know Grady well enough that every single troop in this little tab has a very specific plant. Uh, that's kind of how detail oriented Grady is. He's just just that kind of guy. So I knew when I saw this one Valkyrie, it had a specific purpose. And you're going to see the queen ends up having to do a lot of work here. So at one point he ends up, he, uh, he pulls over the, the dragon to uh, help with the, uh, or just get the dragon out by itself. It's got a bunch of uh, minis in there, I believe, or goblins, sorry. Uh, so he used the one mini to lure out just the dragon. All the gobs stay inside. So he can deal with it in sort of two separate parts. And that's what he brought the Valk for. Because then when the gobs come out, he drops the Valk to kind of take one swipe at a big group of the gobs and just smash them, help the queen out a little bit. So in come these miners, and very good job with that too. They're just going to reinforce this kill squad 
of four healers, the heroes, one Valkyrie, and now these miners. And they're just going to kind of walk their way around the base. And that was the plan. And he got, he still, I think he brought 26 hogs or 28 hogs it was. Um, and there's not a lot of this base to go. And if you look at this base, again, sort of overcompensated, I find these these weird meta base designs with the trying to maybe pick off healers with this uh, air defense for like an HGHB. I don't know. Um, but it's too easy to judge where everything is. I mean, surprise, surprise, the DGBs were in those two compartments. Um, you know, I just am not, not, uh, I'd never sold on those. You know, I, you know, I always go back to the open alleyway concept base design. I just was never, ever fully sold on it. You just uh, leave yourself far, uh, open to too many attacks. And fortunately for Town Online now, um, getting fresh hit tripled is obviously a far, far more uh, common thing than it used to be. Uh, however, you can still defend. You can still defend, and I find with just very solid fundamental bases, uh, you still get that first defend, which really is the most important thing uh, in the war <clears throat> for at least your defenses. Uh, Mike O, going in. Uh, I thought this was really cool. Sort of an HG uh, BD. Um, He's bringing these uh, ha uh, sorry, healers and giants with 10 baby dragons and some he uh, heroes and bowlers. Sorry, so HG BDB, that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> so the idea is this: the same thing, except you're, you're not bringing hogs, you're just bringing a bunch of uh, baby dragons. Because you know the giants are going to go in, uses the earthquake there. I love that, too. You don't, don't see earthquakes too often. Um <laughs> in war anymore uh anyhow it gets the heroes going in everything's uh, just going to follow these giants right into the base big chunk of it is now open uh, i am uh liking lava hounds and cc again as uh, just like i've always said about ccs though it can't be all lava hounds a few scattered in lava hounds i think is really really helps town hall nine fresh hit defenses a lot of people don't expect it anymore and it's not like it's super life-threatening but it really can throw your queen off. It can throw certain troops off. In this instance, unfortunately, it doesn't really do much at this point. It does hang out, though, uh, pretty much to the end of the raid. Uh, but a lot of times, it, it, say the century, if the queen didn't walk up and she walked in, the queen would be standing on this Lava Hound. It would be burst, and she would have been back here taking damage from uh, from the Lava Hound. I don't know. It's it's just an interesting thing to uh, sort of a curveball to throw at attackers, I find, having a few Lava Hounds scattered throughout your Town Hall lines. <clears throat> as you can see, though, it's basically the same attack as an HGHB. Just walking the Giants around the base, letting the bowlers follow behind, smashing everything on the way, and just supporting with baby drags all on the outside where they have no threat of air defenses at all. And they're going to do really good good cleanup work they can get and you know they don't have to get stuck on walls or anything like that as so long as they avoid some traps and you don't run into air defenses baby dragons are gonna be great cleanup units for see boom <laughs> come some air skeletons and traps so those baby dragons go bye bye but he's still got a couple left now they're working on that lava hound as you can see it's gonna almost burst there <laughs> but it lasted that whole raid i love it so in that instance the lava hound was completely detrimental to this attack because it immediately locked on the giants and just followed them and didn't do anything the entire raid. But some instances, it can be uh, be very tricky for people to deal with on a first hit. Uh, let's move on up. Number 22. Oops. My bad. My buddy Kadic. <clears throat> Bring a fairly, you know, standard attack here. Um, Going to do this little bit of a charge right into this section of base. Taking a lot of point defense. Going to have to get that rage down here very quickly. There it goes. Keep her up. Oh, so close. I hate letting my queen get that low. I, I'm, I'm not anywhere close to as skilled as guys like Cat and Grady and stuff. But I will. I always oh, way too scared to let my queen get that low. I, I watch guys do it all the time. I'm like, yeah, no, not for me. I'm going to get that rage down super early. Otherwise, she's going to die. I know she's going to die. Uh, so unfortunately for Caddy, did not get the full lure out of that. Uh, just sends a bunch of archers over to the queen. So he's got to deal with that later on in the raid. But the value of this little uh, charge into the nook here is just unreal, right? He's gotten a bunch of point defense. He's about to step up and get an expo down. The expo goes, goes ahead and sends in this cold-blooded golem, uses the uh, mortar there as a perfect anchor. Let's get his funnel going. Take a few of those buildings out. Gets the minis down nice and early on these. Well, as soon as these buildings go down over here, you can get that king going on in at the queen chamber. Finally, out come all the archers. The only threat now is this baby dragon. Um, 
but gets the double poison on it very quickly and it's going to die to the poison which is great but if if the baby drag gets let loose on your valkyries before it dies then it could it could end up posing a problem but not the case here for cad just going to get those bowlers in with those valks jump spells down opening up the core blam 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 uh, it does have a couple of the bowlers sort of walk in weird angles, but it doesn't really matter. These two in the uh, these two that follow the Valks in uh, end up doing serious work. Has to the ability on that king. He's gonna end up busting them back on out to the outside, I believe, here in one second. Uh, yep. Thought he might go back, try and take that jump, and then end up over here. But that's what the Valk did. That's right. Valks end up going back up and around, which is kind of nice. They end up standing in this core here, and I don't think they get that wall down time. But you can see what I uh, what I mean. 18 seconds ago, there's two air defenses. The cannon goes down. Base is GG. Down goes the air defense. Just a builder's hut in the corner. Goodbye. And that's a tree in the peg for Caddick. Nice job. Um, next on the block. So last of the Town Hall 9s here. Check out Robbie's hit. I think Robbie uses drags. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love this P.E.K.K.A. statue hiding the, uh, hiding the builders out there. It's classic. So anyhow, Rob recognizes these newer meta base designs with these air defense on the outsides. Um, really, uh, I don't know exactly the reasoning, you know, maybe because you don't, if giants are standing on the wall, they're going to be shooting the healers behind it. I imagine, but it just leaves you open to, to attacks like this. Uh, Rob doesn't even need to bring healers. He's just going to suicide his heroes at this air defense, suicide his queen at this one. So he's now got two air defense out of the deal and goes ahead and zap quakes himself a third. And this fourth air defense here sitting way out here on the outside is going to get tanked by this lava hound. Eat a mind to the face. So it's absolutely perfect because he's going to get the hound to burst here once the dragons take care of this stuff. They're going to step up. Almost gets this hound a burst. Any second it does. I know it does. A couple more shots. Down it goes. Boom. Perfect timing. Just distracting for these dragons. Just There's way too much now, right? There's no air defense that remain in this base. He does have the heroes down here. But that's not going to be a problem whatsoever. Uh, he's got the Lava Hound over there sitting on a minion. And unfortunately, the drags take a, uh, take a walk over there. But look at that balloon. Just does perfect work. Takes that mine out of play as the dragons go over to the uh, Lava Hound. Going to make work of those pups very quickly. And then work their way through the rest of this base very slowly because they are dragons but they are just beastly like the, this bound of dragons with what is here even though that expo is pointed up there's nothing that is going to be able to stop this attack he even basically has the swag rage didn't even really need that rage there whatsoever and work through the rest of this trash mark down the tree in the bag for rob nice job buddy beauty all right uh, moving on up I got a lot of 10 versus 10 action to show you here. First is Alpha bringing this uh, very sexy Lalo. Against the, uh, against the uh, level one Inferno Towers, it's, you know, it, it makes it a little bit easier to get some, some good pushes into the base. So when you're making your plans, guys, if it's level one or two Infernos, chances are with a couple Golems or, you know, even a CC full of Max Giants, you're going to get pretty good value on them. Um, just all your troops in general, right? Because those level three Inferno Towers are a big upgrade. Uh, so that's what he's going to go ahead and do here. He gets the jump spell down. He's going to get the queen, get the CC. Classic Shattered Lalo. Take down that defensive queen. This queen and some wizards are going to step up in a minute. Don't think he quite gets this air defense out of the way. Oh, yes, he does. The queen's going to step up here. Boom. Take care of the wizard tower. Take care of the air defense. Excellent. So the air attacks already commenced. Has these lava hounds in at the uh, 10 o'clock air defense. Hastes everything right, right on top of that first inferno tower. Just beautiful. Going to start getting a good rotation on these balloons now, clockwise around the base. Tank uh, hounds are doing all the tanking here. Doesn't quite see it save that queen because he's taking both those expos at the same time. But hay spells are down, throwing these balloons all over the place. They're now sitting right on top of this air defense. Down it goes. Still has Lava Hounds to spare. Just absolutely beautiful. I think he just barely... Because if the way this is sort of shaped around uh, this Inferno Tower, I believe... Oh, no. These get on over to it. 
But good freeze on that. That was actually perfect freeze, to be honest. That's what saved the day there. Because if he didn't freeze instantly, these old balloons would all be dead. He'd only have a couple more. I don't even know if they would have made it to that arch tower. Does have a lot of pups cleaning up all over the place, but that was that freeze was really just absolute money. Beautiful attack there, Alpha. Bam. All right, next up on the chopping block, number 15, this is Harley Quinn. I would say Jamie by day, Harley Quinn by night. Brings a, brings a golem here. Is just going to get some wizards down, get some of this funneling going nice and early. Drops a giant on this side <clears throat> with the baby drag. Going to take care of all this trash. Open up that wall. Let the king and 10 bowlers in. With a jump spell going kind of right over this intersection, I believe. Letting everything into the Inferno Tower and both of those heroes. There it is. I want to push it up a little bit there. But uh, anyhow, everything's going to lock onto that queen in one moment. Anyways, down goes the queen. Out comes that clan castle. And down goes the poison. Very, very quickly. Good job on that. So the heroes are just going to shred through that clan castle. Queen's got, got to take care of that baby drag. She's going to step up, take care of a couple Teslas. The king's in on top of that Inferno Tower that just does not quite go down. But I believe this queen, maybe, I swear something got that Inferno Tower. Nope. Guess I'm wrong. Miners are, one of the miners going to pop over there and get it. Come on. Go, miners. Yeah, there they go. Literally spit on that Inferno Tower. Down it goes. Good good heal. Like, you don't want to wait too early on your uh, on your heals, guys, for your miners. I, I've been practicing a lot with miners. It's actually quite frustrating at times. Uh, the key is you got to keep them in a good... I guess like a lot of your troop deployments with the miners, yes, they're, they're a very mass sort of spammy troop. But in the same token, you have to plan for where they're the major clump of them like this is going to go. You need them to go to the correct buildings in a group because as soon as they start splitting off, that's when the miners get weak. Um, I shouldn't say weak, but weaker. Uh, they definitely in uh, in the smaller numbers because they're standing above ground for so much longer uh, are a lot more susceptible to getting killed. Now, uh, when they're in that critical mass number and you can keep them, you know, it's the same idea as with surgical hogs, even Valks when you send them in, you know, you generally want them to stay clumped together. Great. You want to be able to heal them both uh, with all the same spells. You can't be using two spells on two different groups of miners. It just isn't, isn't, isn't as efficient if you can keep them in this death ball, just rolling through a base to all the correct targets. Just need to finish off the cannon. Down it goes. A couple builder's huts in the corner, but it ain't no thing. That's a tree in the bag for Jamie. Nice job, girl. Beauty. Um, next up, 13. Good old Chad. <clears throat> he goes ahead and brings two golems here. Uh, so it goes in this little shattered entry from six o'clock. Same idea though. Going to get a couple wizards down, try and take uh, take care of that funnel nice and early. Gets a baby drag just a little bit too close. I think um, I think he wanted it to go to this building first, but anyhow, he does. He did get the one on the outside, so that that isn't the best ten <laughs> ten troop space trade there. But oh well, it's what it is. Goes ahead and steps right into this space uh, with all these bowlers coming in from behind. I think he brought eight or nine bowlers there. Uh, so the Inferno Tower locks on, but Jump Spell is going to go down, let everything in this Queen Chamber, gets the Rages in, Golems get it out front, do a little bit of tanking, which is perfect. It's going to get that King in there and hit that ability, poison down on the CC troops there. Has to drop that second one though. Drop second poison. Hmm, maybe not. There it goes. Second poison is down right on top of that dragon. Queen's locked on anyways. Doesn't matter. Did lose a few bowlers to that dragon, but no big deal. They did their work, right? The Inferno Tower is down. The CC troops are dead. The Queen is dead. Base is severely crippled. Let's just send in a ton of miners. And because of the way we took out this sort of chunk of base, the miners are just going to start working their way together in, in this big unison group like I was just talking about. Um, be able to keep them healed under a couple spells as they work their way around and towards the Inferno Tower. 
In fact, this sweeper is even going to draw a bunch of them in. So you mean you do not, you do not want them to get too split up because they will will uh, start start pittering out once they get split up like that. Be able to uh, again, don't be chintzy on your heels with them either. Get those heels down, keep them going, keep them going through those high DPS locations, and they're just going to take out singled out point defense after that, like no problem whatsoever. Finally gets it down and they get healed back up a little bit. <laughs> she really has to take care of that Tesla now. That Wistar is also a threat. If they get stuck, see, like, see right here, Wistar is going to do big damage to them there, sitting there. It's just still not quite enough, really. I mean, Wizard Towers need a tweak. Um, I'm hoping there's another update, a big update. Apparently, there is one coming soon. Uh, I hope that's one of the things they address uh, as part of the way to combat miners is fixing Wizard Towers. They just, they, I don't know if you ever watch them closely, they don't work well i should say they don't work as at least i would have intended them to work if i was designing wizard towers for this game and i think they could be a lot more powerful a lot more deadly um, without having to add another uh, defense necessarily even though i think that might be a good idea too still um they can make a big impact on things like miners and bowlers if they uh, uh buff wizard towers a little bit more not necessarily buff them just Change the AI. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen a wizard tower try to hit a moving target. It's it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> That's all I'll say. A uh, couple more here to show you, and I'm going to call it a day because this is already a very extended recap. It's my man, Dennis, who was also just chatting. Uh, they were uh, Grady. When I just chatted with Grady, like I mentioned, about five minutes, or maybe I guess like 25 minutes ago now, uh, Dennis was planning a hit for a Town Hall 10 in the current war uh, in 2.0. So, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Got to chat with him for a few minutes uh and pump myself up for this recap so uh dennis brings this one goal with the two with the two healers on it. i thought that was very smart um really knowing that it's not in inferno tower range so the healers is is going are going to extend the life of this golem quite substantially actually so sends in a miner here gets the has to get this uh army camp down on the outside good job with that just getting the funnel created once it is created, he's going to get everything right in and at this first Inferno Tower. Jump spell is now down. Going to let that Golem on in. King goes down. Bowler's in behind. CC full of Bowler's going to get everything working. This Queen's going to get sucked in. Nice early poison down on the Queen, too. Good job with that. She is very slow. Queen steps up. Just got to take care of the Clan Castle now. That Everything's going to be under that poison. All the Bowler's under that Rage are going to get big value. King is still in there doing work as well. All that stuff is now dead. Finally, that baby dragon goes down. Now that stuff is all dead. So big value on this, right? Start sending in these miners, and they're just going to start working their way through the rest of this base. Uh, they're going to stay in this nice, very clump fashion like I've been talking about. Keep those heels down. Keep them alive. Get everything towards the Inferno Towers in the most uh, you know, unison group of uh, pack of them as you can get. And you're going to be looking pretty good. Second heal down right away. Nice. Just has to overlap, right? You do not, do not want them to die. They all kind of go in all at the same time. Just this whole attack. See how they're staying in this clump? And even the healers lock onto them for a second now. So that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so gets them in. Now now's where they start to do a bit of a split, I believe, because some of them are going to go up and around for this trash, and the rest are going to go down. Uh, but there's not quite enough point defense, right? You, you have to get them through the big meaty part of the base for them to have a chance at the end to finish cleaning up so you're going to see the ones that went down this way end up getting uh, killed mostly by uh these point defense <clears throat> but the pack of them is split off over here is just going to come in and mop up because really there's only one arch tower to go now definitely going to be a three star here for dennis look at that queen up there queen did a little bit of cleanup work but her getting stalled up there was kind of the best thing uh, that could have happened. Uh, she was really, really hurt for a while. And that one healer healed her up from like zero health to 100% by the end of the raid. thought that was kind of cool. Uh, all right, one more. One more. And we're calling it a day. My man, JJ. Similar attack. Shattered entry, he decides. Goes ahead and gets this baby drag down. It's going to get a handful of buildings. Good value on that. Good value on the one on this side too. Because he gets that golem down to the tanking. And it's just going to start working its way in and around. Get, I think it even gets maybe this archer tower. Because it did start targeting it. But it's going to go right to this archer tower now. And no. The second one locks on us right but Oh, so close, so close. I love how I look at like little value on units like that. If you get, if you got that arch tower with that baby dragon, that would have been crazy. Anyways, 
Uh, wall breakers are in. Golems get let right on in. Let's send in some bowlers in behind. Going to get the boner, boner style attack going here, right? Um, really, it's just it, it's using bowlers with the kill squad to get that bolster of a kill squad. Like at Town Hall 9 right now, it's so powerful bringing bowlers in your CC because all it does is it gives your kill squad insane push into the base, allowing you to just send in a bunch of miners. You know, Town Hall 9 is obviously allowing you to basically do what else you want to finish off the raid. Uh, now, Town Hall 10, because miners are so predominant, if you can do that with the kill squad and get, you know, a good 40% of the base out of the way and get some key things out of the way, uh, you can send the miners in. And if you keep them in a clump, on under heals, uh, there's nothing that can stop them really. They'll hit DGBs if there's a heal down, and they, it's just the way they are. They they don't necessarily die. Just take care of them, right? Heals down, keep them in a clump as best as you possibly can, especially around things like defensive kings, uh, CC troops, uh, skeleton traps. Even if they get stuck on some stuff with some high hit point buildings near Inferno towers, you got to keep them alive. You got to plan for that kind of stuff. Um, but really, you know, uh, just focus. On getting this good push with your kill squad, um, using the bowlers, whether it's like you know guys I'm seeing use anywhere from eight to ten to you know fourteen bowlers, and taking out very specific targets like Inferno Towers primarily, defensive queens, clan castle troops, defensive kings even. I find when you're using miners, I'm more worried about the king than I am the queen. Because the queen dies so quickly to miners, but the king stands there and beats on them and tanks for a while. And they're standing above ground the entire time they're fighting a king. Um, so if it's just miners versus a king, that can be very deadly. So that's something to watch out for as well, guys. But and as you can see, JJ's got this one pretty much in the bag. Um, I bet he was shitting his pants, though. Because if you look at the time on this attack, it's three minutes pretty much exactly. And just got it with the minion there with probably one second to go. Um, Let's hit play again. Just double check the time. So it's three minutes and one second. And I'm pretty. Where did he start this? He started down here. So one. Is he dropped in it? Yeah, baby drag is down. <laughs> so there was literally points of a second to go with JJ on that one. Nice job, buddy. That's three stars in the bag. Uh, anyways, standard recap. Thanks for the war, GWA. You guys are awesome. Uh, really good competition over there. Uh, we meet again anyway that'll uh oh sorry uh one more thing uh i wanted to announce uh I, for those of you that follow my channel um you'll probably notice i haven't done an invicta recap in quite a while and it's just it's a time issue there's nothing new with uh, my wants to do you know I, I love doing uh content for the guys and i believe that invicta deserves more and on top of it uh, Swarm is been has been uh, participating in the occasional range war and potluck, and I want to get Swarm a little more attention. Uh, you know, build a little bit of uh, interest maybe in guys joining Swarm. They are doing some really cool stuff down there, guys. So, um, whoa, that was kind of interesting. Um, you know, so anyhow, with that being said, I can't do it all, and uh, I'm bringing a guy in from Invicta. He's got a account Invicta and Swarm. His name's Doctor D. Awesome. He's going to be uh, doing a couple combined recaps with me. We're going to do the Invicta versus Cold September War together, and I'm going to get a chance to introduce him. And he is actually going to be taking over content for Invicta. It's all going to be on One Hive Labs, all going to be the same channel. Uh, just two of us now just pumping out uh, content from two different clans. So hopefully, you know, we'll get back to, uh, you know, uploading at least two, three, four times a week uh, with multiple different things. So uh, th that having that help is just going to be so awesome for me. And uh, between the two of us, I think we're going to be able to bring you some great stuff. Anyways, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help a bag that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.